All right, I'm back in the basement and I'm gonna talk about one-wire sensors. So these one-wire sensors uh, are really easy to deploy around the boat and uh, very easy to connect up to your main Raspberry Pi. So today I'm gonna show you how to do that. Before we get into the hardware and how that is all connected up physically, we're going to walk through the schematic. So at the top here we have the Raspberry Pi uh, GPIO header, 40 pins. Uh, pin 1 is 3.3 volts here and is connected uh, to the, the, the voltage or VCC connection of the, uh, of the one wire sensor. Then the blue line here, pin seven, is connected to the data connection of the one wire sensor. And then we have ground here connected to the ground line of the one wire sensor. This interface that we show here, or this connection that we show here, is basically a connecting block. And then we have a resistor, a 4.7K resistor, which goes between power and uh, the data pin. And, and that's basically it. So once we connect the sensor, We'll be able to use that now if you wanted to connect more sensors you really just need to daisy chain them so you can connect them like this or basically what i end up doing is connecting each one back to this connector and and that's that's it once you connect them up they will they'll show up so let's talk about the hardware involved first we have a raspberry pi uh, this is a Raspberry Pi 4 and I'm powering it or uh, putting my operating system on a USB drive rather than the onboard um, SD card uh, just because it's easier for me um, and uh, yeah and that's what it is. This one I've used for a couple of other projects um, and I tend to reflash it every so often so it's a relatively new install. We also have a one-wire sensor so this one-wire sensor uh, is basically a, a I think it's a 10 foot uh, cable and uh, you can buy these in various cable lengths and it, it says it's waterproof. It is pretty waterproof. I wouldn't submerge it really, uh, but I would stick this in somewhere where it might get rained on or wet. Uh, it'll be fine. So that's the one wire sensor. And then we've got a, a cable that we're gonna link between the two and a, a connector block. So this is a connector block right there and then we have a 4.7 uh, kilo ohm uh, uh, resistor so one of these resistors is uh, the one we're going to use so that's all the material okay so first we're going to take the connecting block and we're going to unscrew the terminals on one side of the first three So we're going to take this so we're going to take the one wire sensor and we're going to put the connectors in to each one so we're going to do black in one Yellow in the middle, and yellow is the data. So black is ground, yellow is data, and red is the uh, power, obviously, at 3.3 volts. You can use five volts, I think, as well, uh, but, but I always use 3.3. Screw those down. Now this should be 
fixed in there, connected. So you've got that connected like so. Then what we're gonna do is gonna take one of these resistors, so one of the uh, 4.7K resistors, I'm gonna take it out of its little holder here, and we're gonna connect it between, you only need one, so we're gonna go, we're gonna open the, the uh, screws on the other side, and we're gonna get ready to put this cable in here. And what I'm gonna do is orange is gonna be power, yellow is gonna be yellow, and then green is gonna be the earth, just cause I've got these available, really. So I'm gonna put those in, in there loosely right now, just so they, they fit in. And then I'm gonna screw down the, the, uh, the earth one or the ground one, like so. And then here we're gonna basically put this right in between those two. So it goes into the connector, either under it or over it whatever, just make sure it goes in, make sure it makes the connection. And you can see by how much it's sunk in that, that that's happened. And then we're gonna screw it down. Check it's tight, so give it a little pull, not too hard, but give it a little pull, make sure each one is connected and tight. That one's actually not that tight, so I'm just gonna tighten it. Tighten it up just a little. Right, and it's definitely connected. If you wanna double check whether it's connected, you can always pull a multimeter. If you wanna double check whether it's connected, you can always pull a multimeter and go for resistance, put it on 20K, and just make sure that between those two, you have 4.7. I uh, don't know if you can see this, but it says 4.68. Okay, so that's close enough for me. And that should do it. Now we're gonna connect this to the, to the Raspberry Pi. So I just pulled my laptop to, to have a look, just double check the pins. And what we've got is pin one is power. So pin one uh, as the, the diagram is is like that uh, so pin one which is power is this one pin uh, the the one that is um, one wire is pin seven which is that one you leave two pins and then pin eight is this one okay so then you have the connections all made. So now we're gonna talk about the software side. So what do you do on the Raspberry Pi to make this all work? Well, first of all, what you should do is wander over to uh, the documentation. So if you go to openplotter.readthedocs.io latest, and then you can navigate down the side here to the one wire page. And so the first thing it tells you to do is to go into the config, so Raspberry Pi configuration, and turn on uh, OneWire. Now, you may have already done this. I probably have, uh, so we'll take a look. So going to Raspberry Pi configuration, into interfaces, and actually, no, I haven't. So turn on OneWire. Once you've turned on OneWire, you probably have to reboot. So we'll reboot. Once everything's rebooted, then we uh, we need to go into Open Plotter, into Settings, and take a look if the GPIO app is installed. So once you have this page up, press Refresh, and it will give you the status of each one of the apps. So once your list of apps has come up, you can look down and see if the GPO, GPIO app is installed. In our case, you can see it's not. So that's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna install the GPIO app. Say yes to that. And then it will install that app 
and uh, and whatever else is necessary. Now, once that's complete and it says done, press refresh at the bottom here, we go back to open plot our apps and press refresh. And now you can see the GPIO app is installed. You can either click on it here and then press open, or you can open it from the menu. It will also be in the menu. Once you have the GPIO app open, you can see here we've got one wire. This is for digital IO. This is for pulse. And this is for CTOC input. We used the CTOC input last time when we did one of these about CTOC, CTOC 1. But we want, uh, we want to make sure we are looking at uh, the one wire. Now, sometimes you might have to do this and set the one wire uh, GPIO. Now, we already have it set because I use the default. The default is pin 7. So it, it, it already is that, so I don't need to do anything. If you were gonna use a different pin, uh, which I do in my other setup, uh, like I do on the boat, I use a different pin, uh, then you can move this to wherever you need it. Uh, but in our case, it already looks like it's found the, the sensor that we're talking about and, uh, and it's listed right here. So if we click on this, what we can see here is, is that we already have one one wire sensor detected and that's its identification. Uh, now, if you were to add another one, you'd see a second one come up. My suggestion is to add them one at a time and give them names. So the first thing we're gonna do here is press edit and give it a name. Now, it wants a signal K key. Uh, now, you can press the edit button here and then pick uh, what you want. So. We go down here until we get to environment. So we want environment. And then we're looking for inside temperature. Now, if you use one of these, uh, if you use one of these um, ones that are pre-loaded, like inside temperature, like here, then what you will find is that uh, the, the, uh, the, the metadata, things like what, uh, what it is like uh, in Celsius or in, in Kelvin or whatever, um, will come up automatically. So what we're gonna do is we could use inside temperature, which just gives us inside temperature, or the way this menu is configured is if we do this one with a star, so we get inside star temperature, we can change it already comes up, comes up with units of Kelvin here, but we can change the star for anything else. So if we were to say it's actually inside the, the cabin or inside the salon, let's do that. So if we do inside the salon, that's what we would, would end up with. And here, this is the selected key, inside salon temperature. Now we press OK. Now it, it wants a rate. So this is the rate at which you get data points. In this, we're just gonna put five seconds. And then offset, this is a calibration. So if, you, for instance, it was out by five degrees, you could put five degrees in there. Um, I'm gonna put zero in there because I don't, these are pretty good sensors, to be honest. Uh, I don't think I've ever had to calibrate one. They're always within a degree. So I don't think it's that big of a deal. So we're gonna press okay. So now you can see we've got the sensor type, uh, its serial number, and then what it's actually going to put out on. And, and that's it, really. In, in this app, in the GPIO app, we can now go out of there and go out of there. And now if we go to signal K, so if we fire up a window, and we can do this actually probably quicker here, if we go to, to the Signal K app and go to Data Browser, 
what we see is inside temperature salon to be uh, 290 Kelvin. And you can see here, open plotter GPIO, one wire is, is that. And that's, that's as simple as that. And because it's using the Kelvin and it's, uh, sorry, the, the, IS, the SI unit, um, then uh, when you use it with other things, uh, it will automatically uh, show up correctly. So for instance, if we were to go for a dashboard here, or sorry, go for a web app and uh, show the instrument panel, um, then we should be able to add uh, or, or, or edit this temperature here. It's already picked up the, the sensor. We can edit to, uh, uh, we should be able to edit that from Kelvin to degree C to degrees F. So now it says, and then if we change the decimals to point, yeah, so 64.1, F is what uh, the 290 Kelvin uh, is. So it's as simple as that. You can use this in KIP. You can use it in any screens. You know, you could put it wherever you like. And that's and that's it. It's very simple. Um, so J, if you want to put this in your refrigerator at home, then uh, it's very simple to do. Uh, just do this. Thanks for watching. Please uh, like, subscribe, become a member if you want to become a member. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and comment.